Okay, so I'd like to show you some hints and tips on various features of TextPad to help you get more out of TextPad. So the first feature is backups. Getting TextPad to help you out with backups. So under the tools menu, oh sorry, configure, preferences, uh, the backup area, you can automatically say that TextPad keeps backups of your files. It automatically saves them every 10 minutes or whatever you say, five minutes or 15 minutes or whatever, whatever works best for you. And you can also have it so that TextPad automatically saves a copy of your work as you save it. So if you've, if you've made changes to a file, it keeps the original and then saves a new version. And then when you sa save the next copy of the file, it keeps that latest version and saves a new version. Okay, so it keeps the most recent version and the one before that. So your current file plus the version before that. And when you save again, the current version's moved to the, to the prior version and your new file saved. Okay, so... Um, not, not a bad feature. You can also have it so that so that's, these three options save in the current folder wherever your file is. And this one here, you can nominate a special folder on your hard drive, for example, slash back, backup or something like that. Okay, and it would automatically save backups there if that folder existed. Okay, so that's a great feature to, as well. Highly recommend you turn these on. Okay. Uh, of course, the, the, the text pad backups won't replace your normal backups. You should also be backing up everything you do to USB thumb drive, USB hard drive, uh, upload it into a, a zip file and attach it to an email and save it in your drafts folder in your emails. Back it up to you wherever else you can, any other drives you can. Okay, so keep multiple backups of everything you do that's important. This is just something to get to get TextPad to help us with the backups. Okay, and uh, every now and again it does, does come, come in useful. You will go back through your old files and say, oh, I needed that. Okay, so turn it on, it's not a bad feature. So the next feature I'll talk about is bookmarks and how to create, uh, move to previous, move to next and delete bookmarks. Okay, so I'll let a file to help us here to give us a bit more space and I'll let the layers, layers of ancient Rome and I'll scroll down a little bit and I'll toggle a bookmark. And up here in a search menu, you've got toggle bookmark, control F2, so that toggles bookmarks on or off. And then once you've toggled, book, once you've got some bookmarks set up, you can move to the next bookmark with F2 previous bookmark with shift F2 or else you can clear all bookmarks with control shift F2 or just come to the menu it's easy with the menu I think okay so control F2 and F2 are the two main key which one to remember control F2 to toggle bookmarks on and off at that line and also F2 to move to the next bookmark okay let's do it so I want to set up a bookmark here and this can be in a text file or Java code or anything you like so I've created a bookmark and I'll scroll down a little bit down here and I'll create another bookmark and now I'll press F2 to move between them Okay, so you can see I'm moving between my bookmarks and that makes uh, navigating between parts of your, your text files or programs really, really easy. If I put, put another one down here, control F2, and then I can move between all three. Okay. And, I, and if you just keep pressing F2, you cycle cycle around again and stuff in the beginning. Or else you can go control F2 to move backwards, or control F2 to toggle them on and off, see? Control F2, or shift F2 to move backwards. Okay, then you'll cycle through them the other way. Okay, so a great little feature, bookmarks. And uh, so you can, you can wherever you're working in your program, you can create a bookmark there and then look around somewhere else to look something up and then press 2 to jump straight back to that point again. No more scrolling around and paging around and, and searching for where you're working. Okay, so it can save you a lot of time and uh, it's a great little feature of TextPad. So another feature of TextPad that's really useful is word wrapping. Okay, so word wrapping. I'll go back to my test file here and I'll go up to the configure window and you can go word wrap or else you can use the hotkey control Q followed by W. Okay, control Q W and that just turns on word wrap on or off. Control Q W, control Q W. Okay, so that's a nice little feature as well, word wrap. So another nice feature is being able to set the default fonts and colors for whatever files you're working on. Okay, so you go up to configure preferences, go to document classes, and you can say if you're working on Java programs, you can expand to Java. And in here you can set the, the, the font, the default font you'll see. So if you want a big font for working on your Java code, you can set it to whatever you like and click the apply button. Um, you can set your colors if you want to, although the default colors are pretty good. And tabulation is pretty good as well. So you can set the default tabs to be three and whether you convert tabs into spaces and whether you convert existing tabs into spaces when you save files. And I have both of those turned on, and I'll set both of those to three. So that's a setting I like. 
Uh, different people might like different settings, but I like having no, no tabs in my files. They're automatically saved, just converted to spaces when I save. Okay, so that's another feature you might find useful. And uh, so you can do it for any files you like, any file types you like. Uh, if you want to do it so it just happens for defaults, by default when you create a new document in TextPad, you can do it for that as well. Okay, so another, another useful little feature is setting the, the colours and fonts and things like that. So another feature I like when I'm working with TextPad is I like having my default Windows keys. Okay, so you can do that via the configure menu, configure, preferences, go to the, I'll minimise that, I'll go to the uh, editor section and down here you can choose what keys you get. Okay, so there's a whole whole bunch there and I like the ones from Microsoft applications. So that, that means my, um, my control C is copy and my control V is paste. Okay, which is the keys I like. But if you like different keys, you can choose those as well. And I think you can even set your own. So have a play around with those and see what you think. But setting your own keys is always good for an application. So another feature I like is the recent files feature of TextPad. So these are the recent files down here. And I like having much more than four. The default is four. So again, go configure preferences, editor or uh, file, and you change this value here. And the maximum you can have is 16 in my version of TextPad. It might have changed in more recent versions. Uh, so change that to 16, click apply, okay, and it tells you that the size will change next time you load TextPad. Okay, so you need to exit pad, TextPad and, and run it again. And then it will save 16 files here, so you can just go straight to files you want to go to. Okay, so they're, they're in your list there, and you can just go straight to them, which makes it nice when you're working on files pretty frequently. Anyway, so that's another nice little feature of TextPad. Another great little feature of TextPad is the ability to compare files. So you might want to compare files, for example, if you've, got a, if you've accidentally created multiple versions of a file, you might have one version on a, on, a, on a USB drive, another one on your hard drive, another one on somewhere, some other drive somewhere, and they've all got different dates and times, and you're not sure which one's the latest. So the only safe thing to really do here is compare files, and that's something that TextPad can help you with. So you go to the, the Tools menu and go Compare Files. Okay, so Compare Files. And then you can choose the files you want to compare. So I'm comparing the original one, which is my Laser of Ancient Rome, and I'm comparing it with another one that I've created just for this video. Okay, so I'm comparing the original with one I've copied. And I actually deleted a couple of lines out of this file. And you can choose what options to have as well. You can ignore um, where things have just changed them up at a lower case. You can ignore those if you want to. And if something's got a lot of spaces that have been deleted, you can click that one as well, and it gets rid of all the ones where you've deleted multiple spaces. Okay, so it generally helps if you've got one of the files open anyway. Uh, if you do it with, say, a document like this selected, it might try and include this into comparing. So open one of the files, Tools, Compare, Compare Files, and make sure you've got the right one selected. So you've got that one and the one you want to compare against, and click OK, and it will tell you what's changed. So you can see here that this is the original, and this is the one I copied and edited and deleted a couple of lines. And what TextPad's telling me is that on lines 16 and 17, I deleted these lines. Okay, so, so this version of the document, which is the original, has these lines, and the copy doesn't. Okay, so the left the less than means that, that document, and the greater than is used to refer to the, the other document I was comparing to. Okay, so you can see the original has got those lines, and the copy doesn't have those lines. So it's a, it's a sort of a cryptic report, and if I, if I show you the, the file, you can see what I mean um, about, about the changes. So line 16 and 17, there's, there's, the, there's the copy that I deleted lines from, and there's the original. If I scroll down to 16 and 17, you can see there's those lines that I deleted from the... And Beatty's messages are ride forth, and Beatty's messages are ride forth, and there's the two original lines that were there. Okay, so it's a cryptic sort of report, but it still can be very useful. And if it comes back and says there's no differences, then you're in the clear anyway. So um, you know, that's a great thing when you've got multiple versions and they're all the same. <laughs> you don't have different versions everywhere. It's a nightmare to sort out. Okay, uh, so that's another great feature of TextPad is the ability to compare files. Okay, Okay, so uh, let's move on to spell check. And that's a great little feature of TextPad as well. You can go Tools, Spelling, and it will They'll just spell check the highlighted text, so I can highlight some text and do a spell check. Tools, spelling. Okay, everything's fine. If you want to spell check everything, just click at the top of a file. Tools, spelling. Everything's fine. If you want to, if you want to spell check this document, control home to go back to the top. Tools, spelling. 
and uh, there's going to be all sorts of strange spelling in here because it's an oldie worldy sort of <laughs> file. I'm not going to worry about spell checking that because I'm I'm not going to. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's how you do spell checking in Java uh, in TextPad. It's very easy, and um, and if you've got any words that aren't showing up, like um, let's do it. Let's do a Java command system dot out dot print line. Now this is going to probably show up because I've done a lot of Java in this, this editor. But let's try and see if that's included. Tool spelling, tool spelling, and it's not there. So you can add it if you want to. You can add it to your dictionary, which isn't a bad thing to do. Okay. Then you can add all your Java commands and any commands or words that you have that aren't that aren't in the dictionary already. You can just add them if you want to. Okay, so a great little feature and well worthwhile using. It's also useful to have line numbers on when you're working. I have them on even when I'm working in text documents. Okay, so configure preferences and view, and you can just toggle the line numbers option there. And that means they're on for all documents for all document types. Okay, and. Uh, just a great little feature I think to have you know often line numbers are useful okay so line numbers very worthwhile turning that on as well it's so another nice feature of the text pad is the ability to see, see multiple files at once so here we are on the on the tab view and if you want to change the order of tabs you can just drag them around okay so you can drag things around so that um, um, you can have things in different orders if you want but you can also see multiple files at once so for example if we go up to window and go tile horizontally We'll see all three files at once. Okay, we want to see them vertically. Windows split vertically, or tile vertically. Okay, so you can see all three files at once. So if you're dealing with multiple files, that can be a really handy feature. But if you want to go back to normal view, you can just go view normalize, and it shows them back as the old tab view. Okay, so very useful feature is to be able to uh, change your tab views, change your tab order, and also split the view horizontally or vertically. Okay. Okay, so tab order we really just did. It's just a matter of changing the order by just clicking on a tab and dragging it to where you want it. Okay, so you can move it anywhere you like, so you can have the, the tab order in any order you want. Okay, just drag it around. And drag that one wherever you want it. Okay, and drag this one up to the start or down to the end. So I've just clicked on it with the left mouse button and I'm dragging it to where I want it. Nice little feature. You can also access the tabs via this little drop down. So you can jump straight to a tab. So if you've got, you know, if you've got dozens of files open, you can select it out of here quite quickly as well. Okay, so another nice little feature of tab, TextPad is the tab order and also the tab navigation. Okay. Another terrific feature of TextPad is the ability to indent and de-indent your data or your files. Okay, so let's just do an example here. I'll have this indented like that. Okay, and if I want to, if I want to select a whole bunch of lines of my, my source file or text document or whatever, I can select them all and go tab with the tab key and it pushes them across one tab spot. And tab again, pushes them across another tab again. Or if you want to bring them back, you can use shift tab. Shift tab, shift tab, shift tab. Now these these three lines here, this one and those two are on the, on the left margin already, but these three aren't. So if I push shift tab again, it'll bring everything over to the left. Okay, so they're all indented nicely. Then if I go tab again, they're all indented together. Shift tab back again. Okay, so shift tab and tab, very useful feature to indent and de-indent your code. So you can very quickly get the, the code neatened up beautifully uh, in no time at all using those features of TextPad. Another great feature of TextPad is being able to change the hotkeys. And here I'm going to show you how to allocate hotkeys to Java compile and run. But you can edit and change or add hotkeys for any of the menus. And you can even add your own menus and create your own menus as well. So it's very powerful stuff going on. Let's go have a look at the, the, the Java compile and run. So under my tools menu, external tools, uh, I've got no options here for compile and run. I can't go control one and control two. They've been, uh, they've been disabled. And that often happens when you change to Microsoft applications as your default key setting for, for TextPad. Or else these might become something else that you don't like. So whatever they are, don't worry. We'll, we're going to fix them up. Here they, here they don't exist, but we can easily change them as well. So configure preferences and click on your keyboard. And then it's the tools menu we're changing. And it's the compile Java option. And I'm going to go control one to compile. So I'm just going to type control one there and TextPad goes control plus one. So I just held down the control and one keys and TextPad inserted that automatically. And go assign. Okay. And then click on run application. And I'm going to go control two to run. So control two. And then go assign. And it's there. You can click on them and it's still there. Control one, control two. Everything's still there and fine. Click apply. 
click OK, and now when you go up to the Tools menu, you've got these Compile one, Control 1 and Control 2 options there. Okay, so TextPad's very powerful, there's a whole lot of stuff you can do, and uh, editing menus and assigning hotkeys are just, is just one of the many features. Anyway, that's, that's a quick run through of my favourite 13 features of TextPad. There's many others that I could show you, but that's my favourite 13. And uh, out, of the, out of those 13, I, I think my favourites are uh, keeping automatic backups and also the bookmarks. I use bookmarks all day long. And also make sure you turn your backups on. You can never have, never have enough backups. Okay, uh, but any, any, anybody, any questions or anybody wants to explore some more features, let me know and I'll do another video. But they're definitely the best 13 uh, features of TextPad to, get, to easily get more out of the product. Okay, anyway, thanks, thanks for watching. Hope that was useful.